Hi, I'm Kesi Chavda. I'm a consultant psychiatrist at the PD Hinduja National Hospital at Mahim, Mumbai. There's been an enormous amount of change that we've seen over the last few years. You know, when, when I first started psychiatry, we had very few people who would come in voluntarily. There was an enormous amount of stigmatization. People were scared because they felt that a person who took medication or a person who went to a psychiatrist would land up having effects of whatever he was taking that would probably be worse than the actual disorder itself. Nobody spoke about it, nobody talked about it as is now happening on television and stuff like that. It was an extremely cloistered kind of environment which we were all trying to fight against. If we are looking at the changes that have happened, we now have people coming out on television talking about it. We have kids who tell their parents, dad go see a psychiatrist, the counsellor in our school is good. We have governmental policies which to some extent have helped bringing it out. The media has taken a fairly important role, newspapers, television, programs, talk about the various issues that Indians and humanity in general face. There's a lot of education also which has happened and I do believe that as education increases, the amount of acceptance that we are going to see in the field of mental health is going to increase. So basically we have to realize that just like there is a physical disorder like diabetes or a heart problem, one can also land up having a psychological mental disorder where one behaves in a way which goes against societal norms or, one, or where one might be doing things which are inappropriate given to the situation. <coughs> given all of that, there's a lot of change, there's a lot of acceptance, there's a lot of movement. There's still an enormous amount that needs to be done but it's fantastic what we've seen over the last few years. The amount of psychiatrists in India is terrible in terms of the population. It's probably about 150th or 100th the amount that they should be. Ditto for psychologists, ditto for psychiatric social workers. So if you're actually looking at the number of professionals that are available, it's very, very, very low. There are a lot of reasons for that. Amongst them used to be the fact that it was not really some, it was not really a postgraduate discipline that a lot of doctors wanted to get into, which is now changing. Because now we find even toppers at the MBBS level would actually want to take up psychiatry. Number two, there are not too many seats for postgrads which are available in, in uh, medical colleges or teaching colleges. So while they may be, you know, to give you an example, there may be 10 uh, seats in general medicine while in psychiatry there may be just one. So automatically the number of psychiatrists who come out into the market as it were become much much less. And in addition to that there's a large number of people who would prefer to practice abroad because things are so much more established over there. And considering our education we are fairly well liked abroad. We speak good English. Most of us have a fairly westernized kind of uh, environment that we've been brought up in at least in the main metros. So it's very easy comparatively to get a job abroad, where also there is a deficiency of psychiatrists. So looking into all of that, the number of psychiatrists, the number of psychologists, the number of psychiatric social workers is extremely inadequate in our country. Hence, we are all overworked. Hence, we keep hearing about the fact that not enough time is being given to our patients, which maybe can be adjusted and so on and so forth. But there's no getting away from the fact that there's a problem. Probably the main challenge is still stigmatization. So before a patient comes to me, very often he's likely to have gone and been prayed over or he's likely to have visited a Baba who's jumped around him and put rosaries all over him. You still have enormous myths relating to medication. I mean, I have patients coming in and saying, is the person going to land up being retarded? Is he going to become a zombie? And I say, where did you get this from? He said, somebody told me. Now, who's this somebody? Nobody knows. So there's this whole thing of somebody telling everybody. In addition to that, I think it's just a, you know, a human kind of a feeling that everybody has advice to give. So it'll always be, oh, you can't take this medication or you're going to take it for the rest of your life. Oh, this is going to happen. Oh, that is going to happen. We must realize today that as affluence also increases, as people no longer have to bother too much about, you know, food, clothing and shelter, it's also important for us now to focus on mental health. It's important for us to feel happy. It's important for us to actualize our potential. It's important for us to bring India up to a level or an acme, which we all have potential for. 
Indians are supposed to be incredibly intelligent people. I'd like to think so. I think we do very well out of India. So there's no reason why we shouldn't do well in India. It would help if we were happy while doing it as well. Hence the necessity for us to accept that mental health is, an, is a good part. It's a natural part. I mean, abroad you keep hearing about people having their own personal psychiatrists or therapists who they go to regularly whenever there's an issue. We haven't yet reached it there, though there are lots of people who come in and say, we just want to talk about, we are doing well, but we'd like to do better. And that's wonderful. The change is now also getting into, let me do better by seeing this guy, rather than there's something wrong with me, hence I must go to this chap. So there's a lot of change, there's still a lot of stigmatization. If you're looking at India compared globally, just because of our enormous amount of population, we've got an enormous amount of patients. What is now happening is that if a new medication is coming out abroad, um, which, um, which has fewer side effects and which has better effects and which causes uh, the person to recover faster, it's probably likely to come out first in India rather than abroad or come out almost at the same time as it comes out abroad just because we have such a huge population. Lots of clinical trials are happening in India and they have to be safeguards for that of course. But there's an enormous amount of, safe, of uh, trials that happen in some of our better centers, including in Bombay and in you know, Bangalore and so on and so forth. These are extremely important because before medication can be given out into the public, you have to do trials on patients, which follow ethical norms. India, like I told you already, is, has a very poor physician-patient uh, ratio. And just because of that, most psychiatrists are overworked. But just because of the fact that there are so many patients, we have so much of experience. If you're looking at a psychiatrist who comes from abroad, he's going to say, oh, I had a very heavy OPD, I saw 10 patients today. And we talk about 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 patients. So that's the difference. It's not necessarily so that we are better than they are. It is certainly not that they are better than us. But just because of the fact that we have such a heavy patient load and that we have so much more experience, I think our ways of handling patients with problems is really at a very, very high level. And that we've seen with all our international faculty and the people who come in and so, and so on, when we have our discussions, we do good stuff. And I'm very glad to say that. Today, we have an enormous amount of medication. Medications are now very specific and they try to, and the, the specific medications work on specific receptors, hence the possibility of side effects really becomes less and less. We do have side effects, but then aspirin has side effects. We still take aspirin. So a lot of our medications now target the kind of symptom that we are trying to get at and don't target the other, side, the other systems. So it won't target the heart and it won't target you know, the endocrine system and stuff like that, which is very, very important in terms of reducing the side effects that might happen. There are lots of new things happening. There's a genetic thing which is coming out. We talk about plasticity of the brain. We are trying to figure out, and there's a lot of studies happening where you will actually be able to say that because this person has this constituent in his brain or his genetic makeup is such, it's this medicine which will work more effectively than that. And that is brilliant. You also have things where you can actually foretell, and we're coming to that, where a child, you know, you, you do certain tests on the child and you can kind of foretell whether the person as he grows up is going to land up having a psychological problem, especially if there's a genetic familial kind of a history. Okay, now there's a lot of debate about online consultation. There's a lot of things for it and obviously there's a lot of things against it. For it in terms of the fact that now with increasing uh, digitalization and increasing uh, video conferencing and stuff like that. You can do FaceTime consults. You can do consults even on online. You can do webinars and things like that. Those are good in terms of a generalized thing. When we are talking of a specific thing, I would always recommend that you have a face-to-face -face consult, at least for the first time. It's all very well to you know be across the continents and then uh, things like that, but it's always better to have at least the first time have an face-to-face -face consult. We have a long way to go, but I have no doubt that's the only way we are going to be able to reach the millions of our population who really have no access to psychiatry or any kind of mental health. Hinduja Hospital, Mahim has fantastic staff. I mean, in general, we've got all the departments we're looking for and we've got a, 
I think, a good psychiatric department. We've got people who are extremely experienced. All of us have had important positions in the Bombay Psychiatric Society. Most of us have had important positions in the Indian Psychiatric Society. And considering that that's a national and an international, I mean, that's a local, uh, city and a national kind of level, that speaks a lot for our competence. We're all very experienced. We have a good department. Um, most patients who come to us now actually are using us to get opinions in terms of they've tried somewhere else and they want a second opinion. I'm extremely optimistic about the future. I believe that it is the field of the future. I believe that as we get more and more access to better drugs, better delivery systems, and I hope when insurance also starts taking care of uh, mental health, which is currently very, I think there's only one uh, insurance company in India which is looking after it. So as insurance takes care, as costs drop, as there is more and more access, as there is more and more availability of mental health, and as people's aspirations grow up where they say that not only should I be successful, I should be happy and content and we help them reach that. I should be able to control my temperament. I shouldn't get angry. I shouldn't get stressed out and we help with that. As people start getting better and better, as people start seeing the change that psychiatrists and mental health professionals can give them, I believe that we can only be better and do better work and hopefully help in some way to make India a better country.